Monarch Bell is a nature reserve that's designed to help preserve the, the ecosystem in this area around the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. This uh, hiking trail we're on doesn't look like much today. At the time of Jesus, it is the international highway, the highway that connected Asia and Africa and Europe through Israel. It descended from Lower Galilee through the cut in the terrain here called the Wadi Hammam, all the way down to the Sea of Galilee, onto Damascus and the rest of the Mediterranean. I always say when I backpack, half the fun is meeting the people I meet. Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> Yom Tov, Yom Tov, how are you today? Fine. Where are you headed? Good. From the mountain to where are you? Ginosa. To Ginosa. Yeah. I am, I love backpacking. You guys have an amazing trip. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> for a little bit of adventure. I love mountain climbing and I've got a great mountain for us to climb. It's a mountain that Jesus and the disciples climbed more than once. Um, it's just here, Mount Arbel. Um, as you probably have guessed by now, it's the setting for two different stories we have from Jesus' life. The first one, Christians call the Sermon on the Mount. It's a extended teaching time with the disciples. The second time Jesus comes up here is in order to give the Great Commission, that uh, directive Jesus gave to the disciples which changed the course of their ministry. And you probably guessed by now too that I think they're related to one another. getting cold and it's it's getting late and there's no way I'm gonna try to climb Mount Arbel tonight. It's got a chance, it's got a chance. And I wish my kids were here to see this because they for a while thought their father could only start fires if he brought along some lighter fluid but dry grass will do as well. I'm really looking forward tomorrow to the opportunity to climb Mount Arbel. It's one of my favorite places in Israel. I think not only because the view is so extraordinary, and it is, it's one of the most extraordinary views in the land, but it has a story that affected my life um, and really changed my life forever. My forebearers um, were from Europe. And, uh, and there's no way they would have heard about a man named Jesus unless Jesus had changed the scope of the disciples' ministry. And he did that on top of Mount Arbel. He, uh, he told the disciples that as they now became teachers, fully authorized to teach everything that he had shared with them, it meant that, that they were sharing the gospel message with people who traveled along uh, the road that I'm camping near and the road on which I met some fellow hikers before. Now those hikers reminded me of the merchants who were very much a part of the way in which commodities move from one place to the other in the ancient world. Um, they weren't just the distributors of wool and aromatics and spices, they were also distributors of the news of the day. And what they did was uh, came through this area that we're in right here just below Mount Arbel, and they picked up the news of the day as it was told by the disciples and brought it 
to Europe so that my forebears might be able to learn that they had a Messiah, that they had a Savior. And I'm thinking about what it meant for the disciples to hear what probably was a news that was a little upsetting to them that you know their their mission actually got larger but uh, without without them changing the scope of what they were thinking about doing um, at least at a human level I might not have found Jesus as my savior Jesus begins the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes really are a survey of the human experience. And as he turns their eyes to the view, he says to them, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. What a powerful way to begin that discourse. It just doesn't end with that same rhetorical flourish. And I think it doesn't end with a powerful conclusion because Jesus wasn't done here. I think the last paragraph of the Sermon on the Mount is actually the words of the Great Commission. And that's one of the reasons Jesus brought the disciples here, because this is where this course began, and this is where this course is going to receive its powerful conclusion. And for a teacher like Jesus, who was very particular about putting important teachings in the context of views that supported that teaching, I couldn't expect less from him than to put his final words in a setting as dramatic as this. Here he lifts their eyes from the place where they had been used to working on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee to the horizon. And he says to them, I want you now to go and take what I've taught you to everyone. Therefore, go and teach all nations. This is a place that changes everything for the disciples. And Jesus wanted to make sure he had a fitting place to deliver this powerful conclusion to the Sermon on the Mount that forever changed how they thought about their mission. Well, that's it. We've walked many miles together through this land, looking at the way Jesus used geography to tell God's story. And this is it. This is the final view that Jesus used in order to speak the last words to the disciples. He said to them, therefore, go make disciples of all nations. This view hasn't changed since they heard it, and neither has our mission. <laughs>